I'm going to start to reduce some of my concepts to their fundamentals. The real secret is how to reduce, not how many needs you have, but how few needs you have. The great thing about being rich is not how much you can spend, but how little you can spend. That's the rich man. How little he can get by on, not how much he needs to get by on. This reduction in things back into a fundamental essence, back into the beginnings of creation for the individual, which relates to his time in the womb and his time as a seed in his father's brain 72 days before it exits out of the sign of the bris into the woman who then develops the seed in 39 weeks of pregnancy and then it comes out and before it comes out it gets tapped on the face, on the lip, and it forgets all the Torah that it learned in the womb and how everything was provided there for it. And later on, he goes through life relearning what he had already forgotten in the womb right before he came out. And so it's a relearning experience. And this is the process of life. Remember, we are in Olam Haba, but even in Olam Haba, there will be a continuous elevation. And this elevation is a hotza, a going out. I translate the concept of hotza as alfaben, alfaben, which has three meanings. It means uh, to cancel, to preserve, and to uplift. How could this be that one thing, when you're aufhaving something, it would, looks like you're lifting it up, but you're also canceling the spot that it was in, yet preserving the spot that it was in, and still uplifting the spot into the next level and isn't that what we do every day as each day gives us an opportunity to lift up ourselves into a perpetual next level of existence a hotza a carrying out the three aspects of the aleph the yud on top the vav in the middle which is the area that we we the separation that causes the lift and then the yud on the bottom is the area that we go into when we go out of. And this going down can also be a going up. And then from the going, from the down, there is an up and a down within the down. And two becomes four. And this is how we get a multiplicity. And this is a perpetual circle, the perpetuation of life, even in Olam Haba, is by the same principle of Alphaben, and the same principle of negation, because Alphaben itself is negation. And isn't that what Maimabadi's negative uh, theology is all about, the idea that what no one can define Hashem. Whenever you give a definition to Hashem, you're giving the wrong thing. It's always more than. If you say Hashem is a table, He is a table. But He's also more. He's just a chair. And then when you say it's a chair, there's more. There's a man sitting in the chair. And this goes on 
perpetually in this perpetual circle that goes on is an Ain Saf. And what is Ain Saf but Ain? There is no Saf end. This perpetuation, Ain, as it's negative, and there's no negative end, there's no end to the negation. And miraculously, as an impossibility, the two double negatives create a positive. The negation of things is what makes them the highest thing. And so, therefore, I walk down the street and I look and I see people's needs, and their needs were, were of a man that needs money. No, by negation, the rich man. The rich man is the man that doesn't need the money. It's the poor man that needs money to buy things, things in general which represent the bia, the sexuality. It's sexuality within a society. All these things are sexual potencies made physical. The car, the boat, the food. These are all sexual things that we look at as necessities, but they're all transferences from the sexual. And as the Zadok lives by his faith alone, he transmutes that sexual energy into negation. And in the negation, it's true positivity. One must first find out his will to lose. And only then he can have his will to win. And so as we progress in perpetu perpetuity, each day is a new level of existence that we lift up into. And this is part of the Messianic promise that even in Olam Haba, we're going to have this, this uh, continuing, continuous elevation of Torah understanding and consciousness. And so this is part of the fundamental that the Hotza, going out, is an Aufheben. The Aufheben principle that is explicated in the philosophies of uh, Hegel where you start with the fundamental press premise and then by negation work back to that fundamental but with consciousness. This is no different than the Freudian opus where you start, where his famous phrase is, where id was, ego shall become. Where the instincts were, the ego or the conscious mind or the idea of the self and the brain shall become where the instincts were. This is our life work. This explication that I'm giving you now is the years of study out of the womb. And as I like to call it, it's womb to tomb, which was a poetic expression of the circle. One is never finished learning, relearning what one forgot in the womb until they get to the tomb. And this is the pleasure. And the real weird thing is that this returning to the womb, returning to its fundament, your fundamental state, is actually shuva, to shuva. To shuv, hey, 
That final hey is the mother. It's the return to the mother. Return to the Gan Eden and the paradise in the womb. There was a psychoanalyst many years ago who believed that your double, your placenta, is what you were always searching for when you came out. That placenta of the, the, the psychic double of yourself, your twin that was in the womb. So this return to the womb and its true Gan Eden aspects of having everything provided for you there, you're in the prophetic position, you have everything coming through your belly button, the essence self in the middle of the body. And with this, of no ego self, everything's provided for for you, just like everything's provided for you in life itself. But you don't see it, so you think it's your own effort. And so here we are, we progress forward, but really retrogressing backwards at the same time. Rotsen shuv, v'shuv. It's a going and returning constantly. A, a day and a night. An in-breath and an out-breath. In perpetuity. And this fluctuation of the up and the down is the return to the womb. And this is one of the great fundamentals of Judaism. And one has to understand that this fundamental area, don't get too far from the fundamental area, because one of the secrets is constant shuva. Remember that the word Shabbat is within Teshuva. It's Shabbat Vav Hey. The letters in Teshuva. And Teshuva with the Teshuv with the final Hey. This return, what are you returning? Returning to God? Returning from sin? Or, you're, or are you returning to the womb? Returning to the essence where you knew everything before you forgot. Before you forgot, you knew everything. So you're not really learning anything new. You're only relearning what you originally forgot.